Welcome back to Legend of Mana. A while ago we got the color blocks, which is really fitting because one tenet of this game is imagination. And what better way to demonstrate imagination than with toy blocks? Everybody had toy blocks as a kid, right? Let's see what these do. And with that, we get the town of Domina, as the Sproutling said. This is going to be our main hub town, where pretty much everything happens. Ah, oh, man, I love this game so much. It's a painting in motion, really. Hmm. What an antisocial fellow. And that's an onion? Eh, whatever. I'm not interested in that guy. I'm gonna go to the market. Except I took a sidetrack. Whoops. Now this guy, this guy looks like someone I could trust. I mean, the dude's got a sombrero. How could you not like an amigo? I don't care about bandits, they ain't shit. Money sounds really good in this day and age. Now here's the thing about Legend of Mana, there's no concise plot. It's primarily what people would call side quests, but I don't think it I wouldn't call them side quests per se. Every quest in this game, alongside the three main ones, also give you a bit of a window into the world and how it works. This is our friend Niccolo. He seems very well equipped. He's also very well versed in combat. He has somersaults, back rolls. What do I got? I got... I can jump. I could do a lot of stuff. We're gonna do lunge and push. I figure dash into people and then tackle them sounds like a good combo. Unlike Niccolo, however, I only have one ability. Not really good with these nunchucks. Now he says he wants to meet Tipo, and for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna, you know, go there. This is our friend Tipo, he's a teapot. Talking teapot. With wings. Nicola is really good at, you know, roping in customers. But he doesn't seem to like vegetables. That's a... that's a bit much, Niccolo. I mean, a house could cost 50,000, but... fuck. Um, uh, thanks? I'll put good use to this... wheel. Now, before we go on an adventure, I feel like I should get stuff. I mean, I have a hundred bucks, so I should probably get more than just two sticks on a chain. So the shop system in this game is really interesting. For I'll go into detail with it later, but the, suffice to say, the farther a place is from your home, the more powerful the gear is. And since Domina can only ever be next to your house, you're only going to ever get bronze gear here. Which kind of makes sense, it's, it is the starter town. And since we start with, you know, a chess piece, I figure some gloves and shoes would like, be a great way to wet, round out my character. What a weird statue in that store. Hmm. Now 
Now we saw it in the first video, but... The main feature of this game is map building, and you can only ever place stuff next to other things. I figure since we're a house in the middle of nowhere, we would probably need access to a highway to get to important places. Yep, that $50,000 wheel is access to Luan Highway. Now, unlike most uh, mana games, this is a really dreary start for a game. No lush fields, no nothing. Just rocks and rabbits. Combat is really interesting in this game. You have, it's basically a beat-em-up. Unlike the previous games where you wait for a percentage meter to grow, in this game you have two attack buttons, heavy and light. Also, we learned a special technique from my chosen abilities. Sweet. We're already starting to, you know, catch up to that devious rabbit. Anyways, as I mentioned before, there are two attacks in this game, light and heavy. Typically when you get a, com a light combo going, your character has a sort of shadow dance behind it. When you're doing light combos, you have a fixed amount of attacks, typically in between three to five attacks. Special techniques are used when the meter next to your underneath your health bar fill, and they are generally stronger but are a lot harder to hit in that regard. You typically save STs for bosses, but in the middle of a long run, it really helps to expedite things. Also, there's a bit of an effect called Synchro Effect. When we meet up with Nicola, we get the ability Bonus Lucre. We're just gonna call it Golden's Game. Oh, hello. Who are you? Uh, Niccolo, I think she'd eat you alive. Sorry, man. <laughs> Where's Gata? That sounds like a cool place. Okay. Later. Now, this isn't the way to the boss fight, but it does have something I want to show off. Alongside enemies. Now, I probably don't do it here, but if you're good with the combat system in this game, you can chain light and heavy attacks quite frequently. And if you're really good at the game, you can do this! Now, the thing about combat in this game is you're not guaranteed to get EXP. Very frequently, you could wind up in scenarios where you uh, don't get EXP or money, which is unfortunate. Here, I'm trying to demonstrate the uh, ability system, but it's not really working. I have lunge and push equipped. Lunge will make you move forward a bit with no problem, while a push lets you stun an enemy for half a second, maybe to get a one or two attack in. It's not enough to get an ST going, but it's something. Now, I went down this path to show off this thing. This is a bonk. They are return systems, basically. If you talk to Bonk, you will be warped to where his tail is on the map. These are typically set up in order to get you back to the start of the map if you took a wrong turn. I don't use them much, but Bonks really are useful when you're first starting out the game. Also, if you notice, Nicolas doesn't have the best of AI. There's a lot of EXP and money floating around, and he's not getting it at all. While the ally AI in this game is really good at combat, they're not so good at trying to level up. So oftentimes, you'll find yourself over-leveling people. I believe in this game, even though you could over-level yourself, the AI will level up in between each quest, so you don't have to worry about grinding your allies. 
Which is nice. Having a level 1 Niccolo at the end game is kind of... Eh. Huh. Got some wheat. Items, items in this game are weird. You can't use items traditionally. Every item in this game, barring equipment, is modding items, which we'll discuss later. But since you can't use items, you are fully healed at the end of each fight, which is really good. Now this kind of got people irritated about Legend of Mana because it's not exactly the... Oh, here's uh, Niccolo's stellar AI missing a command grab. <laughs> Anyways, many people kind of didn't like Legend of Mana initially because the combat wasn't like Secret of Mana or Seiken Densetsu 3, and people didn't like that. Which is disappointing because this game has a far more in-depth combat system than those games. I mean, starting out, it's not all that hot, but it really opens up. This game is all about imagination, and this game lets you use your imagination when making stuff. For now, though, we're just some dumb hick with a pair of nunchucks beating up plants. Now, I mentioned before that this is not a direct sequel to the Mana series, but it does have a lot of familiar faces. Mainly in terms of enemies, like, initially you saw Rabbites, and that's like a staple of the Mana series. We also had those Wind Squids, and I believe the plants are something inherited as well. Alongside these dudes, who doesn't remember the Chobin Hoods? And I have cash. I have some food. Why don't you accuse these guys of being mad for money, Niccolo? You just tried to extort a teapot. Now, much like Secret of Mana, the first boss in this game technically is a mantis. This guy's actually a pretty fun first fight. If you don't know how to play the game initially, you really have no idea how to beat this guy. But there are some interesting facets to combat. For one, if you constantly wail on a dude, he'll be stunned and you can just beat the shit out of him. Look at us go! Another thing is, when bosses do moves, they have a ton of invincibility frames. But by that wit when you use an ST, you have them too. Look at that sick teamwork. We're just kicking ass. That was a pretty quick and dirty first quest. I like it. Not bad. Couldn't have done it without you, Niccolo, with your drop kicks and your failed grabs. <laughs> um, what are the, what's this? This isn't money. I gotta pay for quest rewards? I'm broke. I, I have no money. I only have the hundred I got from that dude. So they don't tell you, but he took... He takes all your money. You get two items and three artifacts, but now I'm broke. I mean... I'm not. I mean, I'm happy I have stuff, but. I'm, I'm broke. Give me back my money! Now, after every quest, there is one thing you could do for a little bit of extra flavor text. Remember our little friend at the, uh, at the beginning of the game? Well, after every quest, if you talk to him... He actually talks! I mean, he has a face, but who would have thought he talks? Also, he has a dark secret. 
He's a budding author. But yeah, this is our story log for the game. I'll tell you what Niccolo is. A con artist. Now I am... Um, I had stopped recording initially, but when I exited the house to go to the next thing, this happened! For those of you that don't know, that's our mailman. It's a pelican. And, um... I forgot that once you do a... cactus log? This quest appears, so I'm kind of ill prepared for this. But we gotta do it. I mean, pumpkins are no spring chicken, you have to deal with them. So let's head out to Domina and see what's up. I know where the quest takes place, so I'm not going to waste your time looking around. Gotta go to the outskirts of town, and that's to the far left. In fact, a lot of stuff happens in the far left of Domina, now that I think about it. Like these dudes, who we'll address later. Outskirts of Domina is a pretty cool place. Nice and tranquil. Well, except for these guys. These kids have quite the active imagination. I mean, they're ambitious, but still, pumpkins? Hi. But the malignant, great title. So, um, I'm level one with very basic weapons fighting two dudes. This is Bud and Lisa. They're interesting because when you fight them, they introduce you to the concept of magic and getting the shit beat out of you as well. Had I known I would have gone into this fight, I would have packed um, a certain ability that lets you heal, but for now we just gotta, you know, beat up two kids with nunchucks. This seems a little rude. I mean, look at the stuff I'm doing to these eight-year-olds. What is this? Now, for the time you get this quest, Bud and Lisa have a lot of HP. I mean, if you ever played a traditional beat em up ooh. I had forgotten that in between the menus I had swapped to uh, lunge and evade, and if you use those both skills at the same time, you unlock a new ability. But I'll cover that another time. As I was mentioning before, if you've ever played a traditional beat-em-up, you'll understand the concept of multiple HP bars. Well, Bud and Lisa both have four, and while they don't do a lot of damage to me, they're very tenacious. It takes a while to beat em up, and when they use magic or abilities, they have quite a bit of invincibility, so that just complicates things. As I mentioned before, Bud and Lisa are also an introduction to magic. Magic is an interesting concept in this game because it's not like traditional magic. Basically, magic could be crafted and it's dependent on certain elements and not in the magical sense, more like the uh, material sense. That being said though, Bud and Lisa aren't hard. Typically you're expected to do these, this mission later in the game, but I had a stroke of bad luck. I can handle him though. If I stop getting pushed. Now the unfortunate thing is I'm using nunchucks in this game. Now while every other weapon has a good amount of AoE you can hit multiple targets, nunchucks cannot. They can only hit one target at a time. And they don't have a really good hitbox. I have no Y radius so I have to be really close to them in order to hit them, which gets frustrating. 
And I also mentioned you could chain light and heavy attacks together, which I'm really good at. And if you know what to do, you could circumvent stuff like guard and evade. So we're just gonna, you know... I don't know if this is a thing specific to the flail, but I've noticed that I get a lot more stuns with the nunchucks. I don't know if that's a passive trait or what, because each weapon has its own unique thing alongside a different skill tree, but I get a lot of stuns with the nunchucks. And there goes Bud and Lisa. Or not? Well, these kids are kind of down on their luck, and they seem like they need someone to look up to, so I'll take these kids in. Why not? They seem like nice, precocious little characters. Even though they're like two feet tall. And they stay in our home. I'll cover Bud and Lisa another time. But for now, let's tell the little cactus about our adventure. Yeah, pumpkins really are scary. One almost blew me up. See you next time.